Hello, I am Jasmine Freeman with Office Dynam Dynamics International, and I am here today with Sue Pekonen, and we are talking about how to present data and financial information to your executive. So I am the Vice President of Office Dynamics International, and I've been here working with Joan Burge for about 10 years, and um, just you might see my face here and there on our webinars. Today we are recording a session with one of our administrative friends, Sue, who was in a webinar and just got some information in the comments section, saw that assistants were struggling with this particular topic, and we started talking, collaborating on the subject, and here we are. This is going to be part of our April blogathon, so thank you for viewing, and if you're watching this on our blog, please be sure to share your comments below and enter to win prizes as well as ask questions of Sue. Sue, if you would just take a moment to introduce yourself and your background to our audience, that would be wonderful. Okay, thank you, Jasmine. So my name is Sue Pekonen, and I am currently the Executive Assistant to the President and CEO of the Safety Codes Council, and so we report to the Government of Alberta as a third party, uh, and we manage the uh, built environment or the safety of the built environment in the province of Alberta. Uh, my background is uh, about a mile wide and an inch deep, uh, as I've done many things in my life. Uh, and I really enjoy being an executive assistant because uh, in the past I have been a self-supporting executive and uh, it's just a real pleasure to uh, be in a position where I can uh, facilitate the success of uh, the president and CEO as well as uh, uh, assist the board and the whole organization in its efforts to make Alberta a safe place to live, work, and play. So uh, I, Jasmine was correct. I saw some comments that were coming through on the webinar uh, about uh, having an owner mentality and asking some questions about, well, how do I present uh, the data to the executive and how do I make um, things to be clear. I may, we, op we seem to operate in silos, all of those kinds of things. Things I've seen in many different organizations that I've been in in the past as well. So I thought, well, I have some content that I can provide, so I reached out and uh, offered to do that. Excellent. Well, I think that after today's session, Sue, the uh, assistants that watch this are going to walk away with some real tips, tricks, tangibles that they can take back to their offices and um, be much more comfortable with the skills in presenting data and um, financial information to their executives. So I'm going to do a quick introduction and then we're going to go ahead and get started with Sue's presentation. So business is becoming increasingly complex and data is becoming extremely important in order for companies to be able to stay ahead of the curve, uh, to remain current and be competitive. Executives need to make decisions that ensure the success of the entire company. Conveying data in a meaningful and clear way is not as easy as it sounds. This presentation will walk you through three ways to present data clearly and provide three tips to find ways to communicate data-based information to your executive to get the longer view that you need to make good business decisions. Some executive assistants are not comfortable with pre presenting financial data, yet you can learn the skill and it will actually be more of a value added service that you can provide to your executive to enable good decision making. This presentation is going to give you three ways to present financial information and three tips for giving your executive the information they need to create success. Sue, if you'll go ahead and get started with presenting data and I'll go ahead and fire up your slideshow. Okay, so there are many different ways to collect data. Uh, we have some that are internal ways uh, from our organizations. We have our own marketing departments. We can, uh, some people know how to use Google Analytics, 
all of those things. All of those kinds or that kind of information is accessible to us as well as there's external uh, data that's available to us and sometimes it can be overwhelming uh, looking at the internet. So sometimes the best way to find the data you need and give the information to your executive that you would like is by uh, asking some questions and those questions are what is the data that you need uh, and what is it going to be used for who's going to see it and what are the things that you need to uh, understand in terms of presenting that so once you know these things you have the foundation to presenting the information and sometimes you just don't want to present uh, the data as raw data you do want to make a chart and you want to provide some analysis you need to tell a story because stories stick they remember things and in this fast-paced environment where things are highly competitive to give a really meaningful story is really important and allows um, not only your executive but everyone else uh, on within the team to understand uh, what is being said and how it's being said. So again, always uh, think about the presentation in a chart. Put the chart in one part of a PowerPoint slide or on a Word document and then put some data analysis beside it so that uh, or, or some analysis beside it so that the information is presented clearly in words. Uh, Different people have different styles of learning, uh, different styles of, of understanding, so they need the different types of presentation in order to consolidate the information and put it within a context that they understand. So uh, that those three things are probably the most important thing in presenting data. So to remember to ask the questions about what they want and how they want it, uh, what it's going to be used for, who the audience is, all of those things are really important. And then uh, understand how it needs to be presented for the understanding and that's going to change from time to time. And always remember to keep it simple. Simplicity is the height of sophistication. It was an architect that uh, is accredited to that quote, and I'm sorry I forget his name. But it is uh, a really, uh, we remember simple things, so remember to keep it simple. When it comes to presenting financial data, uh, there's usually three things that uh, the exec. Uh, the executive wants to know and uh, usually those are the things about how is the or how is the organization performing uh, against its uh, forecast to its actual and uh, whether or not uh, you're hitting your goals in sales and marketing targets and uh, what your profit and loss looks like particularly for smaller organizations that are in a startup mode uh, there's going to be a lot more of that kind of information that needs to be reviewed uh, constantly because uh, you're going to be making adjustments uh, on a conti more continuous basis than you are as a more mature business. So uh, one of the things that's really important is uh, understanding what um, your expenses look like, your actual to forecast. Uh, and uh, there are, I just put three things very high level, I put salaries, salaries are usually the most important um, cost in an organization and probably the highest cost in an organization. I put rent uh, and I also put um, uh, uh, the marketing costs. And you'll see that uh, in the bottom of that there's um, some analysis in terms of why those costs are what they are and why some are higher and why some are lower. And 
the executive will probably know some of this intuitively, um, but there's a, there is some other analysis that needs might need to happen in order for them to really understand what's going on. Uh, the accountants in the organization know what's going on and they may provide this information to them or they may pass it to you to uh, interpret and put together in terms of presentation form. Keeping it clean, keeping it simple, again, is really important. And that's the same for the um, revenue side when you're looking at some revenue models that, that need to happen, again, I just put uh, the three products, what the pro how the products are performing in sales, and uh, what's uh, and then some analysis in terms of that for uh, product A was doing really well, uh, product B looks like it's uh, struggling a little bit, and product C uh, is, is doing fine. Uh, but maybe there's something that needs to be reviewed in terms of where the market can be increased in terms of that. And again, it depends on the size of your organization. If you're a smaller organization, these things are really critical. In a larger organization, it's um, going to be really, uh, there's going to be a lot of people who can participate and, and probably there's already people that do this type of analysis and provide this information to your executive, you'll see it come across your desk and again, maybe for your value add, what you can do is review it and um, create some more clarity for the executive and allow uh, that information to be more concise and uh, give uh, the executive a really uh, clear picture of what is going on. Uh, when you're talking about uh, a profit loss um, or a profit loss statement, uh, those things look at uh, you know a bigger picture of the organization and uh, take into account a number of different things. I use the example throughout um, to keep it consistent so that it would be easier for people to understand what that looks like. And a profit and loss statement just allows uh, a quick snapshot of what's going on in the organization. Uh, normally for the product you want to, it's the product manager that's going to be, in a larger organization, it will be a product manager or somebody who is doing these kinds of analysis because a profit and loss does take into account the cost of goods sold. And uh, cost of goods sold uh, is an important, um, uh, an important aspect of the profit and loss statement because it takes out some of the um, margins uh, or the cost allocation of what your actual sales and what your actual revenue are. And then uh, you'll notice the statement down there of EBIT, uh, which is earnings before interest in taxes. That is a tax or that is an accounting um, statement and uh, it does need to be taken into account as well because uh, there are other things that impact your your entire financial picture such as the taxes that you have to pay uh, to a certain government and uh, you, the interest that you're paying on loans and um, other types of financial uh, um, vehicles that you may be using to support your business. Uh, so in terms of um, providing the financial uh, information to your executive. Again, just understanding uh, how it can help uh, the executive, what the executive needs in order to make the decisions that he or she needs to make, and uh, talking to the people in your organization that allow um, or have that information and finding out what that information uh, is and what those terms mean. All of that just adds value to helping your executive. Uh, and again, keep it simple and try and align it with your income statement and your um, balance sheet. I did provide a link uh, in the slides for um, accounting 
um, uh, site that allows you to do a little bit of research on your own and get some more information of your own so that it does uh, create uh, a little bit more uh, information for you to grow as an executive assistant and provide uh, better service to your executive. Excellent. Excellent. Wonderful, Sue. Well, thank you for sharing this information. Um, it really reminded me of when I started to take over more of the conference responsibility for Office Dynamics. So we hold a big annual conference for administrative excellence every fall. And Joan was really the one that was kind of planning the event, hiring the speakers, and figuring out what vendors we would use, and so on. And then as I uh, just spent more time with her, more years being on the backside of planning the conference, she started to turn over the reins to me. And one of the things she wanted me to do was to keep in a certain um, budget or cost per attendee. But for the first few years that I managed that event, I didn't have any um, any kind of guideline to work by as far as far as like these sheets that you were showing me. And when I created the event budget, I had that um, actual that we had actually spent in the previous year, and then what my estimated was um, for the coming year, which helped me plan for the event better and actually budget for my speakers, budget for our staff and, and hotel and meals and all of the other line items that were going to be happening through the event. So just by um, using something, a form like that, I was able to better plan for the event. And then when the event actually happened, I was able to take my forecast from like say 2015's event and fill in the actuals for 2015's event. And then plan even better for the 2016 event, um, using those numbers, knowing what happened um, in the previous year and where we wanted to grow, what numbers were going to be changing, and so on. So it's um, really for any type of project you manage, the, this, um, these kinds of forms are going to be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's so important. And, and even uh, if you just do a small a little budget to get the practice or exercise. It's really helpful, and it uh, it creates your interest and um, allows you to grow and become even better at uh, um, providing value to your organization. Absolutely. Well, I'm so glad that we were able to sit down and talk today and just have this quick little chat so that all of our readers and those who are participating in the blogathon at officedynamics.com are able to just pick up another skill set and uh, hopefully take some tips that they learned today and just um, feel more empowered to do their jobs better and uh, support their executives and their organizations that much greater. Thank you. Yeah, I hope so too. I look forward to answering any questions. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, if you if you um, have questions for Sue, go ahead and put those in the comments of the blog, which is again officedynamics.com slash blog, and uh, it will be under the same title of this presentation, which is how to present data and financial information to your executive. Thank you. Thanks.